Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be talking about all of the products that didn't work out for me this year. I always do my yearly favorites, which I will be doing after this video, so stay tuned for it. But I also wanted to do products that didn't work out for me this year. Just because these products didn't work out for me doesn't mean they can't work for you. I'm just telling you guys why they didn't work for me and why I don't think that they're worth the money. You can always leave me your comments below and let me know if it worked for you or what are the products that you hated this year and um, we can talk about it in the comments. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I make beauty and fashion videos here on my channel. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Isn't it the worst when you buy a deodorant and it's supposed to be clear, but you put it on and it's like a whole bunch of white stuff under your arms? And I'm just like, girl, I don't want you to show on camera. Can you not? All right, be right back. Gotta clean my hands. So I'm gonna start off with eyeshadow palettes. And the first one that I'm gonna talk about, I'm pretty sure everyone saw this one coming because it was all over the internet and everyone was talking about it. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette. And when I first got this palette, I tried it out on my eyes and I didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. It did perform nicely on my eyes, but the biggest problem that I had and everyone else, well, most of the people that use this palette was the fallout situation. The eyeshadows just had way too much fallout. And I mean, it, it just, I mean, if you're spending that much money on a palette, you don't want to have to be dealing with the amount of fallout that these eyeshadows had and I'm gonna dip in a brush so you guys can actually see the situation because I mean if you haven't seen it girl where have you been you dip in your brush one time and, oh my god I'm wearing a, ah, my dress I'm wearing a white dress and I like literally got over all my dress no 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 I haven't taken my outfit picture yet ah! That was my problem with this eyeshadow palette. The fallout is crazy. Look at that. It fell all over my dress. And now I have to clean it before I take my outfit picture. But this is a beautiful palette. I mean, the colors are gorgeous. But the fallout situation was a no-no for me. Another palette that when I first got in the mail, I was like, Oh, the packaging is beautiful. The colors are nice. And then I used it one time and I forgot about it. I was like, well, what happened to this palette? It, it just... I mean, it wasn't there for me. One thing I do like about this palette is the packaging. It is very pretty and sleek, and when you open it, you have a big mirror that you can use if you travel with it. But then you look at the eyeshadows, and you're like, whoa, do, do I really need this palette? I look at this palette, and I'm just like, I don't think there's enough eyeshadows in here that will make me want to use the palette on an everyday basis. I mean, like I said, the colors are pretty like, eh. So, I mean, do I think it's worth it? I don't think so. And should you pass on this palette? I would say yes. I have so many other palettes that I would recommend to you guys. I mean, I have like so many affordable ones that I get such great use out of. So if you guys want to see a video on my favorite eyeshadow palettes, affordable and high end, let me know in the comments below. And if it gets a lot of thumbs up, I will film it for you guys. Another eyeshadow palette that I just think, I mean, you, you're buying this probably just for the name is the Maybelline Gigi Hadid. Let me tell you, I got this collection in the mail and I was not excited about it at all whatsoever because as soon as I opened all the products, it looked like all the Maybelline products with just her name slapped on it. I played around with the collection. I tried it. I used it on my skin and I, you know, I used it for a bit and I was like, you know what? You can go to the drugstore right now and find a lot of these eyeshadow palettes without the same packaging, without her name on it. Um, the same exact quality of these products and you won't have to pay a higher price to get her name. I mean, I think she's gorgeous and she's a supermodel and she's stunning. This has to be a collection that I, I honestly don't, think it's worth the money. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I can't believe I have another Anastasia product in this video. I really do love Anastasia Beverly Hills. Like, you guys know, last year she made it to my yearly favorites for a lot of different products. Her brows, her liquid lipsticks, her contour kits. I mean, she has a lot of great items in her makeup collection. But, you guys, this palette right here. This is a highlighter kit. It's the Glow Kit in Moonchild. Personally, I just don't see myself wearing a purple highlighter on an everyday basis or 
at all to be honest i've never worn a purple highlighter if you do wear colorful highlighters like this and i think that's great but you have to ask yourself is it worth having this in your collection just to use a few times out of the year like i i just don't see i i, mm, I just uh, i'm so sorry but this this is just a no for me like i i don't no i'm so, i'm sorry I, no no i'm sorry this is a Huda Beauty Winter Highlighter Palette. And when I first saw this online, I was like, oh, great, another holographic highlighter palette. Yay. <laughs> I do want to say, though, that this color right here, I do like to use on my face. Even though it shows up a little bit green on my skin tone, I still kind of like it to add a pop of color to my highlight, but not too much. If I'm going to spend this amount of money on this highlighter palette, I want it to be a palette that I'm going to be using all the time because makeup is expensive. And I mean, I'm not going to buy something just for one color, to be honest. Like I want something that I'll be able to get a really good use out of or even like incorporate into my everyday makeup routine because like I said, makeup is expensive. I feel like a lot of people saw this product coming because I did a full video on it and I just didn't like it at all. This is the KKW Beauty Contour and Highlight Stick. You guys, I tried this out and I tried it different times off camera, on camera, and I just, I didn't feel like it was worth the money. You're paying so much money for this contour stick and look at the amount that you get. Like this, I will use up in like a few days because for me personally, I wear makeup every single day and I like to go in with my contour, my highlight, my bronzer, my I, like I go I you know I do the whole thing and for me if I'm gonna be spending I think it's $45 on this kit it better last me a while you know so I, I just and the quality of the product is just not there for me it doesn't really blend well on the skin and I just feel like I don't think it's worth the money. I did try the KKW Beauty Contour and Highlight Powder Kit and I absolutely love it. It's become one of my favorites lately and I've been using it every single day and I do like the quality of the products. They are totally worth it in my opinion. But these contour sticks, it's a no for me. And I'm going to have to pass on that. I know you guys saw this too after Fenty Beauty went live. And people started going crazy over the amount of foundation colors that she included in her collection. Every single brand that I follow on social media started following along. And including more colors and more diversity into their collection. And that for me is the most amazing thing in the world. Makeup should be for everyone not just for a specific skin tone or a specific undertone you know what i mean you guys will definitely see fenty beauty in my 2017 favorites but you guys this is a match stick and it's basically one of their concealers i don't really like the formula of this concealer because i feel like it's too dry for my skin i have a very hard time blending this product into my skin when it comes to concealers i personally like liquid concealers because they just perform so much better on my skin this is the last product that i wanted to mention in today's video these are the sephora charcoal exfoliating wipes and i've only used one and one is enough to know that i do not like this at all whatsoever Ever. as soon as I used this on my skin it literally felt like I was ripping my skin apart like I was literally hurting myself and I'm like oh no stop I 100% understand that these are exfoliating wipes but if you need a good exfoliator let me recommend a few because I have a few upstairs that I absolutely love and I have been using for years when I used this on my skin I was like no 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 thank you this is literally like torturing yourself and I would not recommend it at all whatsoever it is just way too harsh on the skin and I soon as I used it my skin started to get red I even used it right now on my shoulder so you guys can see and look my shoulder got red too it's just way too harsh but you know what's funny is that Sephora does make one of my holy grail must-have makeup remover wipes which is the coconut version so if you're looking for good wipes try those so that's gonna be it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it let me know in the comments below what were some products that you purchased and ended up not liking never using it's probably in your drawer right now you're gonna have to dig through it um but it'll be fun to see what other products you guys didn't really like this year so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and with that being said i will see you guys in the next one very soon bye oh also favorites coming next <laughs>